It is the rundown Thursday, September 26th, and it is brought to you by our great friends at Proper Wild. Let me tell you, Clem, let me tell you, Chief, Proper Wild is delicious energy shots and energy gummies that deliver for the perfect boost whenever you need to wake up and stay fun. There's no weird ingredients in Proper Wild, just good, clean caffeine. It's the best-selling flavors that they have are peach mango, strawberry kiwi, and blackberry. What is it, you ask? Glad you asked. Four to six hours of energy, five times more caffeine than a shot of espresso. Let me tell you how you can get it. You go to properwild.com and you can use code WILD for 30% off. That is properwild.com, code WILD for 30% off your order. Let me tell you about Uh, Proper Wild, guys. It was at the Pizza Fest. Wifey and I were a little tired. Obviously, we're old. We had a long day ahead of us. Proper Wild booth is there. We got our strawberry kiwi. Took it down, delicious, and then we had the energy the rest of the day. So it is approved by the Clem family right there. Approved. Good. Get them on. Get them on the snack, boys. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Uh, I'm on my Cal Ripken shit right now, hosting the rundown three straight days. Uh, I feel like the warehouse should be dropping (laughs) the next number down. But yeah, uh, we'll be back to normal on the rundown next week. A lot of stuff going on that if you know, you know, if you don't know, you'll eventually figure it out. So you got me, you got Barstool Chief, and you got Clem Dog. Number one topic, I, we had to have Chief on to talk politics. Uh, our mayor, the beloved mayor of New York City, he was indicted last night, Eric Adams, uh, which made for a pretty fun night on Twitter. We get one of these nights every six months or so where just all the old videos and memes come out uh i i don't really know you know he took some money from turkey for election who cares like i don't think any of us actually care about that it's just funny to dunk on mares uh, Lori lightfoot i i though dante's legacy is introducing the world to Lori lightfoot because i don't know about everybody else i don't pay much attention to mares like i don't care but when i see her goofy ass face i just crack up all the time Last night we had the Eric Adams. Uh, the best thing about living in New York City is you can wake up and have a 9/11 outside your window. He has that other video where he goes, New York. He he goes, you might think this is just a baby doll, and then he like rips it open. He's like, but there's a crack pipe inside. Uh, he he's a shitty mayor. The the city has gone to hell, but he's hilarious. You what do you got on uh, Eric Adams indictment, Chief? I'm gonna miss him. I'm going to miss him. And shout out to Dante, who was on this blog as well. And you think of Dante, you think Lori Lightfoot. That's special privileges because I feel like probably only four to five percent of his blogs on Lori Lightfoot actually saw the light of day. So, <laughs> so uh, but yeah, bro, she... bro I, I would be in negotiations on text with him. Be like, if you can do this for me, I will grant you one Lori Lightfoot paragraph. <laughs> your next blog. Yeah. So that, but it was like, there were videos coming out last night that I had never seen that were incredible. I love the one where he was just comparing New York. It's like Dublin's like, or New York's like the Dublin of oh. Ireland. New York's like the uh, Barcelona of Spain. New York's like the Rome of Italy. It's like, dude, what do you, what do you, ta- what does this mean? No, he's like mankind going into every arena across the country. He's <laughs> like, and it's great to be here in. Boca Raton, Florida for the cheap pop. That was Eric Adams. No substance. Just say the name of the city. He He's incredible. And the, the, obviously the classic one with, you know, check your child's room. If you look in their, in their jewelry box, you might find a gun. It was like, <laughs> what, like what the hell? That, it's, that to me, I saw it for the first time, I think in a year or so since that came out, still had tears in my eyes last night around 10 o'clock watching that. So I, I will miss him. Uh, it, he is full denial mode right now that all the allegations are false, which is a pretty good indication that you know that they're true. Uh, so we'll see the Turkish thing, whatever. Dante is linking him to Diddy, as yep. Dante would oh, do. Uh, yeah. Two guys arrested around the same hey, time. Hey, they must be linked. Credit to me. I kept that part in the blog, even though it had nothing to do with anything. Mm-hmm. I was like, I just got to let Dante cook sometime. If he wants yep. to draw a comparison from Eric Adams to Diddy, let, let's have at it. He's, Dante has beaten me down that it's just like, <laughs> he won. He won. I have walls of territory. Dante, Dante wins. Just give him full publishing rights at this point. We won't have an internet company. <laughs> just, Clem, what do you have? 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, speaking of just the politics in general, my new or it's kind of always been my like strategy, but I, I tuned it up in the last year. You and Hubs, you guys are the editors in chief. You guys can deal with all the politics blogs. It's like this has to be blogged in some sense. With just like the even the the thing that Dante's been harping on, where he based uh, the mayor said he essentially like inventing garbage pails or dumpsters <laughs> yeah, instead yeah. of just throwing garbage on the street, which again yeah, is like ludicrous when you see it in New York with known for its rats. Um, but he well, was he a also said rats run this city. Like that's <laughs> like a quote from him. It's like, dude, dude, I I could talk about this forever, chief. I don't know if you know, we don't have. So we don't have like alleys where you, like you guys have oh, your Chicago. Brother, I know. I know you know <laughs> that, but we also don't have garbage cans on the street. So businesses, restaurants, they just put their bags mm -hmm. of garbage on the sidewalk. So you can't walk down the sidewalks and that's where the rats feast. What they could do is just put in huge garbage bins that you can put your bag in. It would help kill the rat population, but they won't do it because they want street parking instead. It's a whole big thing that drives me insane. So then Eric Adams just goes, yeah, the rats run this city. And I, that's when I was out on this guy. I was like, no. The rat, he has the rat vote. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, you get the rat vote in New York. You are, you're set for life, which yeah. takes me back to the that's guy. That's a billion he, votes. Yes. <laughs> The guy he replaced, de Blasio, which, I mean, all-time great Onion headline, obviously, so I said de Blasio, colon, well, 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 not so easy to find a mayor that doesn't suck shit, huh? Like, <laughs> just, you know, like, de Blasio was such a punching bag, and I know, I think a lot of the, even some of his stuff came out when we were trying to, to like, pump the brakes on the politics, and then at some point, we're like, no, we just have to keep going in on this guy, because he was an absolute buffoon. We followed up, this guy made it, what, a couple of years, and I feel like he went through, like, three police commissioners in like a year, like the school board, there's people getting arrested every single, it's like real life Gotham city where it's like, everyone is the most corrupt people on the planet. It's like watching a Batman movie in real life. So uh, good luck to the next person. I can't wait to see how they fuck and, this up. And Eric Adams, we were talking about it in the office today. There was a time when every post on my for you page was someone new with a cell phone video, like Eric Adams sitting first class, flying to Ibiza, flying to Miami, flying to wherever. <laughs> Bro was just taking kickbacks from every city in the world, not hiding it at all. Turkish was, Airlines, baby. It's like, where are you going, man? Like, there's also an article, uh, at, or it's a show called Curbed or or a series. I don't know what it is. Where they're like, does Eric Adams really live in New York City? And they they kind of stalked his house, and he was there like twice ever. He doesn't even live here. So, <laughs> I, I think there's something you have to be hilarious and corrupt to be a mayor, like DC mayor, famous Marion Barry. Mm -hmm. Mayor smoked crack, went to federal prison, re-elected mayor. You just have to be the fucking man and an insane human being or woman, Lori, to be yeah. a mayor. <laughs> well, Rob that was... Ford, rest in peace. Absolute uh, electric factory, right? Uh, he was mayor, uh, right? R.I.P. I remember we had um, oh, what was his name? The guy right before Lori. Everybody hated this guy. Hated. Or whatever. No, who's really? that guy? I see him everywhere. I'll, 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 the name will will oh uh, Rahm Emanuel, who is yeah. like Ari Gold's brother in real the real life version of that, and everybody hated him. Like left town, very low uh, ratings. We got like some kind of motorcycle going on. I don't know if you guys can hear that behind me, but we did smoke out the big country music festival during COVID. They brought him up on stage, standing ovation. So it's like every one is worse than the one before. Now, now we're like, man, was Lori that bad? It was kind of COVID. Now we got Brandon Johnson. It's like everything just gets worse and worse. It makes me wish that Portnoy had won that Boston election back in like 2013. Because what we would have gotten out of that, we thought we thought Eric Adam was electric. Having Portnoy as a mayor of Boston would have been incredible. Uh, I don't want to get too political. I do find it funny that the Democrats are like, you must resign. It's like, have your boys back. Like, on the other side, uh, four or five, he, you know, gets every felony, whatever. They're like, yeah, that's our guy. We stand behind him. <laughs> yeah. God forbid the mayor takes a couple dollars from Turkey. It, everybody's calling for his resignation. Like, come on. Like, we, we can do worse. Than Eric, I blame Eric Adams for not being more corrupt. I hope more stuff comes out. If you're only taking 100K from Turkey, that's light work. That's I mean, uh, that's a Tuesday for anybody else. Turkey's like a tier five country to be taking a bribe from, right? Like, <laughs> give me some fucking like Switzerland or some shit. Um, well, Dante's, we'll on the, Dante's on the case. I'm sure more stuff will come out. He did give P. Diddy the key to the city last summer. So yeah, we'll that see. was tough. Yeah. That was tough. I'll say Ellen had a tweet that was being retweeted around, which called it Diddy like her like snuggle off, I guess, or something. 
my my entire TikTok is just like old stories of P Diddy. We're like, oh, that's problematic. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sad. It's not yeah. great. Not good. Uh, topic two. Speaking of Dave, Dave says he will pay up to three million dollars in NIL a year to get Michigan a quarterback every single year. Um, I I as much as I want to hate on it and call it you know like loser mentality, not loser mentality, but it's like you know, $3 million just so your college can have a quarterback. If I had the money, I would do it too. Maryland would be a powerhouse. Uh, if you have fuck you money, why not? You got to spend it somewhere. Why not just every single year get the best quarterback out of the transfer portal? So I can't really hate on him for saying that. Now, if he does it, we'll see. He's been saying he'll play me heads up poker for the last 15 years now. He hasn't done that. So he does do a lot of talking without a lot of backing it up. But Maybe, maybe those should be the new stakes. If you win, he has to give $3 million for a Maryland quarterback. For a Maryland quarterback, yeah. yeah. I mean, our best quarterback in the last 20 years is Tua's brother, Tolly. <laughs> so <laughs> so we could we could use somebody here. Uh, what do you got on this, Chief? Big port uh, Michigan. Yeah, uh, as, as a Notre Dame fan, I can tell you that just getting transfer uh, portal quarterbacks doesn't work. Sam Hartman, <laughs> very handsome, good hair, sucked. Uh, Riley Leonard. He's he's Tim Tebow. Like that's I'm convinced he's just like a reincarnated Tim Tebow because he all he can do is run. And if you ask him to throw a five yard out, he can't do it. So I think you're better off finding an 18 year old quarterback, keeping that guy happy as you develop him and then let him play as a junior. Pay pay the backup two million a year until he's ready. That should be the Portnoy strategy. I don't want to tell him how to do his business. He's done pretty well for himself. But if it were me, these one and done transfer quarterbacks, I am out on that process and i don't really like michigan so dave have at it you can have riley leonard right now if you want him. i love this stuff just as someone that doesn't really have a horse in the uh, that doesn't really have a horse in the race for uh as a college football fan i kind of just you know watch or whatever i just want to know like how come dave is the first person I mean, i'm sure there might have been a few others it should be open season. Every billionaire, the, whoever's the richest person in Notre Dame, should be like, "Yeah, we're gonna fix this stuff. We'll get who a better quarterback." Did. But they apparently, did. they didn't, Chief. They just did a bad job. Why is they Arch did. Manning not wearing the fucking golden helmet right now? Give me a fucking real quarterback. Oh, I, I'm I'm wondering about this as well. If I'm a billionaire, like legitimately, can I go to Arch Manning and write him a thirty million dollar check? There's no salary cap on the NIL stuff. Like, there's so much, pe- so many people at all these universities that have so much money, aren't they going to have to implement some sort of like guideline standard salary cap, something so a Bezos doesn't invent Bezos university and just pay, you know, $200 million a year to these players, to these student athletes. Get, get uh, Deion Sanders as a coach. It's, it's prime and Amazon and all those things all wrapped up into one university. Yeah. I don't know. I it's, I got to say, I, I'm out on this. I am I think I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm out on college football. Good. You fucking Is killed the Big East. Notre you know how I'm getting angry I get it, you guys, you college football fans. You killed my Big East back in the day. It wasn't me. You guys, if I would have given you guys Penn State, and then you could have <laughs> had a real football league, and we could have had our original Big Ten, and maybe everything would be different. But not to be too political, all these schools still being uh, nonprofit tax exempt with oh, their gosh. $80 billion endowments yeah. and these college football contracts are worth billions of dollars is ridiculous. So yeah, spend that money, give it to the kids. And then maybe you have to actually break even, even on your books. As the only parent on this panel here, I have to say, I've been hoping since my first child was born that college would either not mean what it meant. Like you need to get it to get a job or it would somehow become like free. If somehow college football's money goes into making college cheap or at least cheaper. Cause I have, I'm on the clock now. I have like eight years until I get my first one going in. So I need this shit to happen soon. So if this can get me there, God bless. If not, I can't wait to see if like Dave brings a quarterback in just as, you know, the guy's working for Barstool. It's content city. Well, wait, how's AJ's arm? How, how's he, how's he throwing the ball these days? He went to one of those little pitching things where you have to like get it in the zone and he was fucking rifling it in. I was like, Holy shit. And right. he bats lefty too. So it's like, oh. he, we, we might have something here, boys. We might be cooking. You got to do the thing. Uh, who was it? Mark. I always forget his name. His dad tied his right arm behind his back his entire life to make him be a lefty you got to get on that Clem like 
I, that was the old USC quarterback went to the Raiders. What was, yeah, what was his what name? Is his name. Uh, there's people yelling at the screen right now who know it. Eh, probably not. Our audience is younger. That was like 1988. Clemmer's yelling at the screen. Right? <laughs> yeah, Clemmer is. Yeah. <laughs> Todd Morenovic. Todd Morenovic. I almost said Keith yes. Markovich. I was like, that's not it. Definitely not it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Derek Rose, Chicago kid. He retired sad he was still actually playing at a decently good enough level uh but he retired took a full page out out ad out in the cleveland paper despite only playing 16 games there that's not really the story story is every you know twitter account with a blue check mark is tweeting his highlights saying how good could he have been uh had he not gotten hurt he was an mvp at what 23 years old or whatever one of the sickest just players that we saw in his prime uh chief you are our chicago liaison you want to give a little obituary to Derrick Rose's career? Well, the Bulls kind of did. They po- posted this Rose rising through the concrete, which I think was the hat to the commercial. Mm-hmm. But when I that was the first thing I saw. I'm like, did Derrick Rose die? Yeah. Like the, it looked, it was like, and then. Accounts goes, love playing it fast and loose with those. Like yeah. someone have an injured pinky and we got Laura Carey. Laura Carey. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, a, just your run of the mill retirement for a guy who was in the league for 15 years. But that's the <laughs> thing. Like he wrote it. He wrote a, you know, uh, took an ad out in Cleveland. That was Derek Rose. We had D Rose. It's a complete, like he had two different careers. Derek Rose was like a below the rim veteran savvy guy who had some really nice nights with the Timberwolves and Memphis and not mm-hmm. so much with Cleveland. Our guy D Rose from the streets, one of our own that stretch. I put it in a blog this morning from like 2007 until 2016. I think that's as good as we're ever going to get in Chicago. We got four championships. We had NBA MVP and it's like, we sold our soul to get that Cubs world series in 16, because after that, everything has been complete shit across the board. All five teams the, when that was right as I was coming out of college, when, when Rose was blowing up where everybody, like every night you had a reason to go to the bar between Derek Rose and the Blackhawks. It was, it was the best. And he was must watch TV and everybody was on board. And it is one of those things because he got hurt right as Jimmy Butler was coming into the team. I do think there would have been a moment where they had Rose, Noah, Butler, Boozer, all kind of rolling at the same time. They would have be, been able to beat the Heat at least once in that run, and it we just didn't get there. So it's unfortunate, but th- those three years with him from 08 to 11, absolutely incredible, and it's it means a little bit more because he was from you know the west side. So yeah. great player, loved D. Rose, nothing but fond memories, and I think you know he's – Seemed like he went through some hard times and kind of like found himself. So maybe that's why he wrote the letter to Cleveland. I'll tell you what. Uh, I went to a Knicks game when he was on the Knicks a couple years ago. And it was a blowout. Knicks were blowing them out. Place was chanting his name from like five minutes down. Just wanted to see him get in the game. It was like he's that kind of player and has that kind of, I hate this word, aura about him. Where it's like you just want to see Derrick Rose on a basketball court. Yeah, And he got in. Place went crazy. It was a Stone Cold Steve Austin level pop Mm -hmm. for him. And it it was cool. It was like cool to see Derrick Rose, you know, play basketball in front of your eyes on the court. And uh yeah, we saw like three minutes of him on the Knicks. wasn't anything special, but it was cool to see him play. It, yeah. yeah, and he was like we were watching him since he was fifteen at Simeon High School, winning state championships because they, you know, they broadcast those games. Like everybody knew about him from the time he was like a little kid, and then he probably exceeded what anybody thought he was going to do, and then it was gone. And right. and, and he still played a, eleven more seasons after. Yeah. For his ACL, I mean, he never got back to you know MVP level. He averaged 16, 18, 16, 18, and then a huge drop off for like three years. Then he got back up to eighteen uh, for a couple seasons. It's not like he sucked, sucked. No, after he... towards ACL, it's just like he never got back to like the quickness, the athleticism, the explosion. Like, he did have a night player. with the Timberwolves where he put he I think he had like fifty two points in a game like two years ago. So. He he did find a way to like reinvent himself and credit to him because he was just dunking on people's heads in yeah. Chicago. That's all he was just like, I'm gonna blow by you and dunk on a seven footer. And I remember when they, they had Coach Cal on uh like local Chicago radio heading into that draft, and there was a discussion like, Do you take Rose or Beasley? And it was like a little right. bit of a debate. And Coach Cal was like, Hey, everyone stop. His chin 
touches the rim. Like he gets up, like he is the most explosive, most like like this. You would have to be a moron not to take him. And they got him, and and just didn't work out. It's a crazy career too, because like you said, he had those MD that like MVP year in those early Bulls days. I covered him, I think, when I first started at Barstool when he first came to the Knicks. When I think we were called the Super Team, which was like an LOL fucking Knicks moment, where it was like us and the Warriors were the only two Super Teams. And I think he like disappeared at some point. He was going mm-hmm. through a lot of shit, like you said. Um, and then when he came back at the end, like you said, Nate, it was like that COVID season. And he was basically our second best player was like, a you know, an old D- Derrick Rose, absolutely beloved by the Garden Faithful. And I like it, when he retired, I was like, shit, like every year it's like, let's just give Rose Derrick Rose like one more year. Like, let's give him one yeah. last run here in New York. So uh, sad to see. But again, as you know, the three people on this rundown right now, three people that actually still, still do blog on barstoolsports.com. I appreciate his appreciation of the written word. Who the fuck is even, like, how many, what percent of the NBA of the players do you think actually know their local papers? Like, 30%, 40%? I'm looking at the, so it's the New York Times, he gave the, so he went to each city. So the fact he did the uh, Cleveland playing dealer is funny because he played like 16 games there, but he, he did the Tribune for Chicago mm-hmm. Tribune. The New York Times, like he better shout it out to us, New York Times Commercial Appeal, which I guess is Utah, Detroit Free Press and Minneapolis Star Tribune. Like guy just respects the print industry. That's how you know Derek Rhodes is old. He knows his local papers and even thought to do that right there. So well, I appreciate it. And full color ads, those aren't cheap. I mean, they're probably no, pretty cheap. I, I will say I, I though. They give them away now, but. <laughs> I, I will say. TLDR. <laughs> that, that too long didn't read that, yeah. that full page. I'm like, brother, like you what said you... probably five words publicly when you were here. I'm not <laughs> reading your your whole swan song. Uh Matt, you can bleep this. Or uh Tom, you can bleep this. What what's the um website that all the players retire in now? They do these like sappy players long... tribune? Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the Derek Cheater thing. Is that no, still going? Yeah. Is that still going? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that replaced local print, and I'm glad that Derrick Rose went back to to local papers. Mm -hmm. Topic number three, still presented by Proper Wild. Five times the energy is a shot of espresso. A's last game in Oakland. (laughs) Every clip is funny. The the fans holding up the chairs, the groundskeepers scooping dirt into water bottles as the game's going on. The employee tweeted out his QR code for the employee discount. Um, the the manager or the manager, the owner is just an all time piece of shit. Where also we were talking about this today. Frank was informing us they still don't really have a deal in Vegas because Vegas wants the team but not the owner, and they're kind of like a joint package at this point. So the A's are still playing in Sacramento for the next at least three years. They haven't broken ground on a stadium yet in Vegas. Um. The A's owner, I, I don't blame Vegas. Like, why would – you've seen what he's done in Oakland. Kind of feel like you don't want this guy coming to Vegas and also just bringing his shitty ownership with him. But you also want a baseball team for the tourism, that's all that stuff. But kind of sad. You know, Oakland been around uh, – the A's have been around forever from Philly then to Oakland. Kind of the the yellow and green jerseys and the elephant, they're, they're kind of like a staple. I don't think people realize how good they were, like – dynasty level uh back in the day because they're kind of an afterthought of a franchise now but yeah it, it's always sentimental when a team is just done in a city I, it, it's sad so yeah chief what do you have on the oakland a's it is sad and you were talking about bezos isn't there some silicon valley guy who could have bought that team and moved them to san jose or at least keep them in that bay area sort of I, but i think it's just old boys club in, in ownership in baseball where even though Fisher is like a cheap asshole, they're like, that's our guy. He's part of the club. So yeah. probably some slippery slope. Where Reinsdorf like, probably loves this guy. Loves exactly. Him. And so yeah. It took them forever to get Dan Snyder out, you know? Yes. Uh, the, the Panthers owner barely went out, even though he had all that terrible shit about him. It's, it's apparently really tough to get rid of an owner, even though the – which I don't get in a way because anybody else who owned the team – they would make a competitive team, spend more money, which raises everybody's franchise value. I just think it's like, well, if they get him out, I could be next. You know, it's like maybe all yeah. these people have skeletons. All these people have probably reasons that they shouldn't own a team. So they all just keep their heads in the sand and they say, nope, we're all set. Plus, if you're a good owner, 
you always want a guy worse than you. It's like at Barstool. You always want someone who's doing a little less work than you're doing. So you can be like, well, at least I'm not that guy. So I think that's why they keep him around. I don't even know if that works at this company, to be honest. <laughs> what do you mean? Sometimes just doing less work makes you a or star. Just staying off the radar. Yeah, off. yeah. Or it makes you a star if you're, you know, if you if you get in like mid Tell us your thoughts, some... Chief. Go on. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. That's fine. It, it's, but I do feel like there is a little bit of that where it's, you can, if you're good for like four or five massive fuck ups that are funny a year, you're, you're employed for life, which is fine. I would love to take advantage of that someday. Are you I talking about White it. Sox, Dave? No, no, not White Sox, Dave. Um, but I, I will say, I thought the juxtaposition of Eddie, he went to the White Sox game alone last night, trying to see, his, you know, the, the worst team of all time, because that's his brain is so weird. A month ago, he and Dave flew out for 12 hours to see A's White Sox, at, you know, the, one of the final uh, homestands for the A's just to see that park and what a piece of shit it is. So it is, and now it's over. And now it's, I feel like the White Sox are the last standing. The other thing about this whole A's move to Vegas, take it with a grain of salt, but we have the Blutman brothers doing social media in the Chicago office who are from Vegas. They swear nobody in Vegas wants any sort of baseball team. They don't want a baseball team. No one really cares about the Raiders there. He said that they everybody embraced the Knights because that felt like a real, like this is ours. They were the first one, but nobody wants the other teams. So for what so who knows what kind of fan base they'll even have there. That's what I'm praying for. I'm praying for that to happen. And it's nothing against the A's. It's like I'm just so sick of this fucking baseball shit. So you have John Fisher, absolute scumbag, right? As an owner. This whole thing with Rowdy Telez, where nutting, you know, they, they DFA him for plate appearances shy of his $200,000 bonus. You have the fucking Mets and Braves are about, you know, they're waiting to wait out a hurricane to play games. And I'm telling you, they're just, they want the Mets and Braves to play on Monday because it's basically a bonus playoff game or series. <laughs> and probably get ended in Mets misery, which always fucking works. And then you have the fucking White Sox who are about to become the worst team ever, right? So it's like, baseball's so fucking broke, so fucking broke because all that are there. Like, I, I I know Nate's not a Cohen guy, but Cohen wants to spend. They want to put a tax on a guy to spend. But then you have this guy, Fisher, who refuses to spend and just completely buttfuck a legitimate great fucking franchise historically. And it's just, it's a fucking, baseball's a joke, man, from top to bottom. So It is. I hope, I hope, I hope, Sac I, I feel like there's even a chance Sacramento was starting to bail. I'm like, oh, yes. Like, I want this team without a fucking home at this point. They, like, they, they just, just have to play 162 on the road. Or, happen. like, they just moved yeah. to Iowa and they play in that Field of Dream stadium with yes. the corn and everything and play, like, in front of 8,000 people every week. I, I do think every league does need this type of team, though. It, Arizona in the NHL, they've been playing at uh, Arizona State's facilities for, what, the last few seasons? I, w I went to a game out there a couple years ago. It, it's bad. It's like that. That was – it's insane that the league – and they couldn't sell it out. It was like no. a 4,000 seat stadium. Jeez. They didn't sell it out. It was insane that the league let that happen for as long as it did. Because I mean, it was Arizona, every other day, there would be a new Glendale's kicking them out. They're trying mm. to build a new arena. Nobody wants this new arena. They signed a new contract for a new arena. They ripped up that contract for the new arena. They're at Arizona State now playing in front of 2,400 people a night as an NHL franchise. Like, it's great. And now they're in Utah, which is also just, I don't, I, I think it, it'll work. In you Utah. can be a sports fan who pays attention, reads Barstool, is on Twitter, watches ESPN. You still might not realize there's a professional hockey team in Utah now. It's just kind of bizarre and weird. And they didn't come up with a name in time. So they're just Utah. They're the hockey club. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I, yeah. The, the other crazy thing is that Oakland, had three professional sports teams like five oh. years ago, and now they have none. And I know the yeah. Warriors just moved across Keep the bay, but blue. I feel like Oakland and San Francisco don't exactly love each other as cities. And then the other two get yanked to Vegas. Like that is so fucked to the people of Oakland. And then, again, I'm sure Oakland isn't like a city burning with money, but like you can't tell me there's a couple of Silicon Valley dudes who grew up as totally. Raiders and Beast fans that would have just, you know, taken care of business and made it fucking awesome. John Fisher grew up in the Bay Area. But he was always like a he was a Giants fan, I guess, growing up, and then he just no, oh, yes, oh, that's even yes. more fucked up. Yeah, and that's guess cool. what? Uh, the fourth team 
will be an NBA team in Vegas sooner than later. It's been, you know, we'll get a greenie blog about that three times a year. LeBron wants to move a team to Vegas. I, I, I mean, those teams are very successful. The Knights and the Raiders are very, I know. And, and Vegas, I think people only think of the strip tourism, whatever. Vegas is a large city with like more 2 million people, people or something like who that. live now. there. Yeah. Yeah. Like Henderson is a massive suburb, you know, like there's mm-hmm. a lot of just normal people who commute to their normal nine to fives. And just, it makes no sense to me either, but they exist. And what's funny about T-Mobile Arena, you know, where you would go to see the Knights. If you're just like a mom and dad, you know, a couple kids in the suburbs of Vegas who want to go to a game, you can't like drive in for the game. There's no parking in, on the strip. So it's actually very difficult, which I think is good for opposing teams fans. Like seeing a game when you're standing at a hotel on the strip is such a great experience. You just drink, walk over to the game, walk out, you're back on the strip. If you live in Vegas, though, maybe that's what the Blutmans were saying. It's probably not as fun at all. That makes that. sense. But no, the day baseball in Vegas in a domed, you know, 30,000 person stadium, sign me up. That sounds great. Fuck yeah. And then finally, oh no, that was everything. Um, after show, uh, the beloved Indiana Fever lost first round of the playoffs. Uh, Dave did a video being sad about it. And then I wrote down that the White Sox keep winning. They they won't lose this last game. So Eddie's, Eddie, Eddie's going back, I think. Eddie's going back tonight. They yeah. have to win three, four, three more, four more. Something like that. I think they're sitting on 121 losses right now, and they have to lose to have like the worst they have winning to lose per- one more in the next yeah. three or four days. Oh, and Clem, that's what I wrote down. Um, what's the deal with the weather in the Mets in the playoffs? I can't keep track of this. So basically, like the Mets and the Braves had a three game series from Tuesday to Thursday, and it was kind of like the Mets had to whoever won the series basically was going to get a wild card. And if you didn't, it was between you and the Diamondbacks and the Diamondbacks might be playing a Padres team that has nothing to play for that they're, you know, by the end of the weekend. So it was kind of like for this, one of the wild cards and the entire fucking universe seemed to know that there was a hurricane right on its way there. And the weather was like a hundred percent rain from basically Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning to Thursday night, Friday, even Friday might get rained out when the Braves play the Royals. So everyone's like, they could have moved the games up. The Braves decided not to because they could either move it to a different ballpark i think the tigers moved their game up um wherever they were because of the weather uh so the fact that they didn't everyone was just like what like baseball why are you so stupid so now there's a chance that it's all going to come down to monday and then the mets and the braves will have to play potentially a double header to just see a side who gets in the playoffs and then go from that double header to a wild card matchup for the next three games where you're there's no just game. completely shot there's no games today until Monday because of the rain. No, the break. So Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday got postponed okay. because of the rain. And then the Mets are going to Milwaukee. The Oh, they have the, a series in between. Yes. There's a series in between. So the Mets play Milwaukee and the Braves play the Royals in Atlanta, which might still have be underwater on Friday because it's a fucking hurricane. Yes. Yeah. It's just major league baseball. Rob man for doing Rob man for things. How's, so, how's Frank handling things? Oh, he's not. We've heard a lot of man frauds coming from the gambling cave. A lot of them, like record setting numbers of man frauds, worst commissioner in sports, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, I get I have the pleasure of streaming on. Mo- so <laughs> on Monday night, I, I won the DraftKings bet again, thousand dollar free bet again, two times in three weeks, which means. I have to pick someone on Monday night football to score a touchdown for a thousand dollar free bet. The first Monday night football game on Monday is Titans dolphins. Oh, but now you're telling me the Mets might be playing the Braves for a chance to go to the playoffs at that exact same time. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't realize that. I don't, uh, that would probably be game two at that point, depending on the, oh, wow. Wow. So it's definitely going to happen now. And uh, I would like to offer to sell my thousand dollar free bet to anybody who wants it. Oh God, this is going to suck. Are you going to come in for that? I, I'm going to try to get sicker by the time I go, actually. I'm going <laughs> to just find someone who has COVID so I know I have it. And then, I mean, I guess you can't go with COVID these days. What I'll I'm taking is I'm taking Tyreek plus 170 to score a touchdown because it's not often you can get Tyreek at plus 170 to score a touchdown. I, this game might end up 3-0. Like, who first field goal wins when Titans, Dolphins, but I have to yep. pick some 
for a touchdown. You might as well just go for a super long shot because run I don't back think... the defensive bet, Nate. I, yeah, Jack McCarthy specifically told me I cannot take it. Oh, <laughs> oh, because I mean, yeah, Levis and I mean, I mean, Skylar Thompson being healthy would be the best thing for you, but I don't think that's going to happen. But I mean, whoever the fuck's replacing him can't be much. Snoop, Snoop Huntley, right? Uh, oh, they yeah, said, for poor Pro Bowlers, Snoop Huntley. Yes, correct. Sorry, put for proper respect on his name. So, uh, yeah, I have I have Tyreek plus 170, and then there's 20 of us left in the Barstool wide. I think it started with like 100 people. Barstool wide, uh, it's a survivor pool. You have to pick someone to score a touchdown every week. 20 of us left. I've yet to decide who I am taking for this week. Chief, are you in? No. I picked a Bears guy the first week, and then – that doomed me so i had to get two the following week and of course i didn't get it so i i am the more time the older i get i'm realizing i am just i am the dumb piece of shit and it took me a while to realize how dumb i am but always believing in these different teams is i've come to that realization i, I feel bad for bears fans because Jaden was so good on monday night it's not your fault. like like you guys didn't do anything wrong you took the best quarterback mm -hmm. everybody everybody thought he was the best quarterback and then Jaden just goes out and just has a generational Monday night football performance. And yeah. now you guys are getting the brunt end of that for no reason other than you took Caleb one. Like it's it, 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 it's a two headed monster between that and Justin Fields is three and oh, yeah, it <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's it is tough. To, and we we went to the game in Indy. Shout out Portillo's um, and w within like six minutes and it's like, here we go again. Like you, it was good. You knew we were in for a long, painful day. Now, I do think Caleb's going to come good. Caleb's good, but that they're going to have to fire the coach. And you guys fucked yourselves, though. You set expectations moderately above bad. You got you. There was a lot of Bears media saying, "Hey," and it was to make Caleb probably have good press clip. Hey, you're coming into a good Bears team, best situation for a rookie quarterback, et cetera, et cetera. You can't do that. Like you have to set expectations very, very, very low. And now I'm seeing all the people saying, well, Jaden has a good offense, offensive line in front of him. I'm like, we have a terrible offense. <laughs> like better, it has to be better than ours. It has to be better. than I'll ours. tell you what, Jaden Cliff Kingsbury is working miracles with him. He's working like getting rid of the ball in under three seconds on every snap. And plus he runs a four, four. So it's like, he's, he's, He's our golden child. He's a freak. I I am actually I I think of the Jets, the Browns, Washington. We're all kind of it's almost like Clem, like your old sons of Uribe with White Sox yeah. Dave. We're all in this misery club together. Yep. And you guys got the the coordinator right. We hired Shane Waldron and stuck. Why Matt Eberflus, who has the worst record? Uh, I think he's now he's in year. Three, he's eleven and twenty-eight um, over three he's years. Get a new franchise quarterback and not get a new head coach with him. That's what's crazy to me. How did they not do that? How, and yeah. like that was the report from Schefter. It was like they spent forty-eight hours deliberating about what to do with Eberflus and should they go after Harbaugh or anyone else. And I have a suspicion that the McCaskies, the owners, were like, we don't want to have to pay two guys at the same time mm -hmm. because they're already paying. The defensive coordinator that got uh, had the scandal last year, he had to be fired, so they had to hire a new defensive coordinator. And then they had the awful offensive coordinator. I already forget his name. He landed uh, – he's with the Raiders now. So they have a second – So gets it. Luke Getsy, yeah. Can and so they – Can you remind me? It was like the defensive co defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. But then like somehow like Peanut Tillman got involved and like that was all fake. So that was all – so Peanut Tillman is in the FBI. That is real. And that's there was real. A, that's real. Like he has – post football, he works for the FBI. He's a Fed. Okay. Um, so there was a report that the FBI raided Hallis Hall, but that was not true. Um, I did find out what – happen i don't know if i'm allowed to say yeah. but basically the the defensive coordinator was not being a good boy and was being extorted and there are some compromising videos of him Ooh. um so they he had to go away to spend more time with his family <laughs> they sent yeah. him to the farm <laughs> yes God. yes but no fbi was not involved i wonder if dante's deleted that tweet yet 
does he delete tweets? <laughs> I love he, that. He, he's, he's a wild card. He's, so he's a wild card. Uh, yeah, yeah, but Derek Rose, you know, Bears, Hawks, Bulls, White Sox, worst team. We're just sad. We're just a sad, we're a sad group out here. Yeah, I, I won my cup, so I'm happy for life. Whatever else. Hey, 42 goals away from Gretzky's record. That would be fun, too. Yeah, that will be good. What do, you, what do you have, Clem? You have Malik Neighbors. That's exciting. You have the Malik Mets. Neighbors is awesome. They play tonight against the Cowboys. Like, tonight is the perfect storm where it's like, Giants fans can say, well, we beat the Browns pretty handily and could have beat the Washington if we had a field goal kicker. Um, so you can talk yourself into two and one Dallas has kind of looked like shit. So, but usually Dallas plus in prime time usually ends in absolute horror. So I have no expectations, but like Nate, like you said, like anytime I come back to it. And again, as a Mets and Knicks fan, I have plenty of reasons to complain as a football fan, nothing will ever top Super Bowl 42. And I like the Patriots. I, it was like, I hated the Patriots, but an undefeated team, best coach, best quarterback. And my team went out with a big goofy quarterback and won the game. Like I can never complain. It's, and especially when you hear this shit that, you know, you Bro, two went and, through over I the mean, years. The Knicks probably very well could have taken the Celtics at least to seven if uh, Julius Randle was healthy. So mm. a healthy Knicks team this year could be dangerous too. So you yeah, to- I'm picking them to win the, to, to be the one seed in the East this year. I think they're going to, Tibbs is going to try to win every fucking game. We're hurt, but everyone else is going to be hurt too. So it's like, who gives a shit? I, I trust the crazy person that'll probably like burn us out by the time the playoffs start. But uh, Tibbs like burn the- out athletes on Derrick no. Rose retirement day. No, <laughs> no. God. He's, he's coming back, player. boys. I'll tell you right now, he's going to, in the papers, he'd be like, I'm so excited to rejoin the NBA. Tibbs is going to ask me to play 20. That was the thing we signed him. We're like, oh, we'll get a couple of minutes out of Derrick Rose. And he's playing like 30 minutes in those playoffs. You're like, you're going to kill this guy. It would be crazy if he just did the, like in February, did the I'm Jordan. Back. Yeah, the Jordan I'm press back. release. Jordan. I'm back. And he's with the Knicks. He could, he would probably, right now, he'd probably be the best player on the Bulls. Oh, God. Legit. That's how bad the Bulls are. He'd trade in Laurie away. Yeah. No, I guess they got. I guess I mean Kobe White, whatever. But this that that team sucks too. It, everything, everything sucks. Did you just give Patrick Williams like a hundred million dollars. Probably he's never done anything. He was just. Uh, we drafted a local kid who with a Lithuanian name who I, I can't pronounce and and won't learn, uh, probably ever. But he is from like Naperville or something. So we got that going for us, which is okay. nice. He was Stephen Chase sleeper. Oh, good. Yeah. oh Frank so, Milikino you know, was his it. sleeper back when he was in New York That's back in the, the day. You're good. Hey, you know, Stephen Jay yeah. did have Sam Howell as his number one pick, so he has a good track record. Yeah. yeah.